Hey everyone, my name is Tejas and this is The Scribbler. Today, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery has finally been released and this is your comprehensive guide on how to play Hogwarts Mystery. Enjoy! In case anybody's getting confused with all the Harry Potter games that are coming out this year, do note that this is not Wizards Unite. Wizards Unite is going to be an augmented reality game where you're going to have to walk an outside world and interact with objects around it. So it's going to be similar to Pokemon Go and it's also being created, developed rather, by Niantic. This game however, Hogwarts Mystery, is being developed by Jam City and it's a story-based RPG game. So let's get right down to it. So before we dive right into the actual gameplay of Hogwarts Mystery, you first need to understand what are all the little things that you see on your screen while you're playing Hogwarts Mystery because without understanding that, then you will not be able to efficiently play Hogwarts Mystery. So after your little stint at Diagon Alley, which is where the game begins, and a few instructions are given to you on how to play the game, you kind of have a basic idea. But still there are a lot of things that appear once you come to Hogwarts and it can confuse you. So let's start from the beginning. First of all, I am now in East Towers as you can see. If I tap on the staircase icon, you can access different parts of Hogwarts. And in year one, you'll have five different locations unlocked to you. Lower Floor East gets unlocked in year two and Hogsmeade gets unlocked in year three. So let's start off from the top left hand corner over here you see your character's face and some numbers beside some symbols. If we tap on it we can actually see a more detailed version of those symbols and numbers. So those symbols and numbers were actually attributes and these attributes are something that your character will have throughout your entire Hogwarts mystery gameplay. So your character will gain courage, empathy and knowledge attributes throughout your entire gameplay experience from the choices that you make in Hogwarts Mystery and also through some of the lessons that you attend. In the top left hand corner you see your character's name which you can change at any point in time. You see your character's level and which year your character is currently studying in. On the left hand side you also see which house you're in and also which ranking your house is currently in for that school year. If we tap on rank you can actually see the entire Hogwarts house points for all the houses. If we tap on leaderboard, we can also see which is the who is the number one position in terms of getting the most house points and you will definitely be number one no matter what your house is and no matter what you do. As long as you play a couple of chapters, you will be number one and you will forever be number one. And of course, getting in first place will award you 100 gems and gems is something I'll be talking about in just a bit. In the bottom right hand corner over here, you see this little hanger icon. If you tap on it, that's where you can change your character's avatar and appearance and look, so on and so forth, based on whatever you want and whatever your preferences are. Now you also see this little icon in the bottom left hand corner over here which says connect and it has the Facebook icon to it. Now this is where you can connect your Facebook account to your Hogwarts mystery account and I highly recommend you do this because in case you lose your phone or you're changing phones, you do not want to be in the situation where you're going to lose your Hogwarts mystery information and your progress that you have made. So if you link to your Facebook account, you can just switch over to any other phone, log in through your Facebook and lo and behold, you will continue the storyline just from where you left off. So that is something I highly recommend you do so. Coming back to the main screen over here, just below where we were just now, there is a scroll with the letter H on it over here. If you tap on it, you see the story progression that you have. So right now, I am in year one, chapter eight. Um, I have completed the lessons and I have two out of three in the story part section completed. So once you complete your story and lessons for that particular chapter, that's when you move on to the next chapter and once you finish all chapters in a year, that's when you finish that year and you move on to year two, year three, so on and so forth. The second scroll that you see below that with the tick on it is basically your side quests. And side quests are not necessary to do, you can always hold these off until a later time if you do not want to do these immediately, but I highly recommend you do these when in the year that you get it. So if you're in year one and you get a side quest, complete that quest within year one before you go on to year two because it will help you in a lot of ways. In you can get attribute points and house points by doing side quests and also not to mention XP and gems and even coins sometimes as rewards. The bottom left hand corner over here is the settings icon and over here you can just change your 
settings, music, sound, etc. Clicking on account info will once again redirect you to your Facebook account and again, I highly recommend you do that. Now looking in the bottom right hand corner, again there's the hanger icon which is the exact same thing where you can change your avatar's clothes and appearance. The book beside it in the middle over there, if we tap on it, is basically it shows you all the lessons that you have for that particular year. So I'm currently in year one, you can see that I've learned three out of four potions, I've done all my charms classes and I have learned two out of three of my flying lessons. You can also toggle over to year two, year three, etc. and you can see which are the other classes that get unlocked in year two and three. So right now we only have access until year three so I can't see anything beyond that. Of course tapping on these individual lessons will also tell you which are the classes that you have already attended and what are you going to attend in the future. The last icon in the bottom right hand corner with the character's face over there, if you tap on it, this is where you can see your friendships with the other characters in Hogwarts Mystery. Coming back to the main screen here, we're pretty much done now except the most important part of the screen is the top right hand corner. Now throughout your entire Hogwarts Mystery gameplay experience, you're going to be doing quests, tasks, lessons, and all of these will give you rewards along the way. And some of these rewards will be through coins and gems. And this is something that you can use in Hogwarts Mystery. I'll be making an in-depth video on how to use your coins and gems effectively in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you aren't already so that you're notified of when I drop that video. So the most important part of this screen is probably the energy bar over here that you can see. Right now I have 27 energy capacity and I have full energy. Now most of the quests in Hogwarts Mystery, you probably have realized this by now, but about 70 to 80% of the quests in Hogwarts Mystery require energy. You have to tap on those illuminated objects and by tapping on those objects, not only are you progressing in your storyline, but you're also using up energy in that process and you have to wait for a couple of hours before your entire energy bar has been filled up again. So basically most of the quests in Hogwarts Mystery cannot be progressed, you can't go further on if your energy is zero. So you need your energy bar to be filled uh, as much as you possibly can. I'll be making a video on energy as well, so again, subscribe. Okay, so now that we've talked about what is pretty much you see on your screen, let's talk about the actual gameplay itself. Now it's pretty easy, you've probably already known this since you had the tutorial in Diagon Alley. Once you're in Hogwarts, you can just scroll left and right to visit um, each of these different places and rooms that are in each of these different corridors. So right now we're in East Towers, we can toggle over to let's say the dungeons and over here you'll see another corridor with a lot more rooms and you can scroll through so on and so forth. So how does a quest actually look like? So let's just say we want to do a potions class. Let's do a potions lesson right now. You simply have to go here, tap on the exclamation mark. This is where you can choose basically if you want to do a one hour, three hour or eight hour course. And for just the sake of this video, I'm going to do a one hour course. Okay, so you can see the illuminated objects. My character has been illuminated over here as well as the book. We can't scroll any further than that, so let's tap on those. If you can see, it says express zero out of one. So if I tap on that, it takes away one of my energy. You can see it's 26 out of 27, and my energy will now fill up in two minutes and 30 seconds. Now that's not the limit, it's actually four minutes. Sometimes when your energy is full, the first minute will be different from the rest. So once that resets, it will be four minutes for each energy reset. So let's just tap away on these. Now after you achieve each star in each quest, you will be given a choice from three different options over here. To choose what reward you want, you get the option to take 200 coins, 15 for your empathy attribute and 5 for your courage attribute. Now, I will be making a separate video on coins and gems like I said, but I highly recommend you don't choose coins because you're going to get a lot of coins throughout your entire course of Hogwarts Mystery anyway and there's hardly any use for those. So I would never choose coins as my reward. Looking at my attribute levels in the top left hand corner, you can see that my courage level is very very low compared to my empathy level, it's already at 10 versus my courage is only at 5. So obviously I will choose something that will help boost my courage attribute. 
Now this is one of the parts of the task where you are asked a question. It's nothing to do with the game itself. Most of the time I've realized these questions are actually Harry Potter trivia and knowledge. So if you've read the books or you've seen the movies, you probably will be able to answer these. So you see, as it says, what is the name of the Hogwarts Portuguese? Nothing to do with potions lesson, nothing to do with any classes for that matter. And in fact, if you haven't seen the movie, if you have only seen the movies, you probably won't even know that the answer is Peeves. Moving along now, let's continue with the quest. Once again, tap on the illuminated objects. Now because you've just started out your journey in Hogwarts Mystery, your energy capacity is going to be much lesser than what you will end up having once, let's say you're in year 2 or year 3. And because your energy capacity is so much lesser, you're probably not going to be able to even finish a 1 hour task within a couple of minutes. Now you don't have to wait for your energy bar to fill up completely, you can, as long as you have enough energy to complete that task, it's good enough to go. So right now I am one energy usage away from finishing this pickup task and once I do that I will most likely I will most likely be able to get that second star as well because we're really close in the progress bar that you can see on top over there. Now this is just a side note, you can always quickly get out of the um, scene while the task is still running you can still explore the rest of Hogwarts if you want to do so. Okay I will see you in two and a half minutes once I get that one last energy. Okay two and a half minutes are over I've gotten my one energy let's tap on those objects again and finish this quest up. There we go, I've got on the second star just as I predicted. Once again, after completing each star you will get this choice of rewards. Based on what I have, I will choose attribute for knowledge. Now it's the final touches, we have to finish up the potion and basically we just have to trace this object. So start, trace it, boom, done. Now longer tasks will also have this feature called focus where there will be a circle which will grow in size and shrink in size and it will keep doing this and you have to get that size perfectly within a certain boundary which will indicate it. Once you get it in that boundary So there we go, we have completed the task, we can see that we get two knowledge attributes per star and we also get two house points with it once we collect we are pretty much done with that lesson. Now that example was of course an additional option that I chose. You can also do the storyline options to continue on with your story. That was just something I did as an extra bonus. Now there are two other tasks that I can think of which are I can't show you them live right now but I will just display them on screen right now and these two other quests that you will see in Hogwarts Mystery is basically one of them is dueling and the other one is making someone feel better. Um, I, there's no other name for this um, from what I know. Please let me know if uh, you know that we can shorten this into just a one word thing. So there's that task and there's dueling which are some other quests that you will see in Hogwarts Mystery and these quests actually do not require any energy so if you have completely drained out of energy like I am right now you can do this dueling and the other task without any hesitation. So dueling works in a pretty easy way, it's pretty much luck to be honest with a little bit of strategy involved. It's kind of like scissor paper stone, okay I call it scissor paper stone, you guys probably call it rock paper scissors. It works in that way where you have three different stances to choose from, aggressive, defensive and sneaky. So once you choose your option, your opponent also chooses another option and you basically have to win over your opponent. I'll be making a more in-depth tutorial on how to duel in a separate video so stay tuned for that as well. And of course the other quest which is to make someone feel better works in a way where you are talking to someone or you're playing gobstones with them and they're basically concerned about something or they're feeling in some way and you have to react to that in a certain way. So you're given three choices, um, most of the time one of the choices is wrong, one of the choices is okay to choose and the other choice is the best option. There will be a certain situation where you will have all three options are okay options 
um, where one is the best and the other two are okay options and you won't have any wrong options in those situations but those situations are rare and I don't exactly know when they happen specifically so yeah you're given about six turns or so and you need to make your friend feel better before the end of those six turns and you can complete that task basically so yeah that's pretty much summing up the entire Hogwarts gameplay experience apart from the quests and tasks that you have um, where you have to tap on the eliminated objects and answer random questions about Harry Potter trivia um, you also have these other dueling and making your friends feel better quests so that's pretty much summing up the Hogwarts mystery gameplay um, of course the storyline is rather intriguing I find it interesting um, enough for me to continue playing this game otherwise this game is actually really simple um, a lot of younger kids will be able to play this game without much difficulty it doesn't take too much skill nor is there any strategies involved not a lot of heavy strategy involved rather there are some situations where you can involve some strategy but it's really not a lot so yeah, that's pretty much it for how to play Hogwarts Mystery, a comprehensive guide. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will be making a lot of tutorials and guides on a lot of specific things such as energy, coins, how to duel, etc. So stay tuned for that. I'll be releasing one video every day from tomorrow onwards. So definitely stay tuned for that. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.